Breath of the Wild is one of the most remarkable creations of Nintendo, the Zelda game which redefined Zelda games. It was so good that it even won Game of the Year, but that is in the past now. Yes, it was a remarkable achievement, I definitely acknowledge that, but with a sequel on the way, how will this game ever live up to the expectations of its predecessor? And no, I am not trying to put pressure on Nintendo or anything like that, this is just for fun. Anyway, I thought it would be fun to make a video going over some of the ways that, in my opinion, could make Breath of the Wild 2 a game of the year, or at least a contender, like his predecessor. And with me today for this video is the experienced Zelda creator, Conrad of Commonwealth Realm. As is tradition around here for collaborations, Conrad, the honour of my line is yours. Well folks, be sure to go and grab yourself a snack or drink and send them in to get featured right here. But let's now go over what the sequel to Breath of the Wild could do to make it a contender for Game of the Year. The levels of attention to detail and time put into Breath of the Wild is amazing. The game had its delays, but these were ultimately very much worth the wait. But whilst it is a quote-unquote masterpiece of a game, it like every game does have issues and complaints. To improve this in the sequel, some of these should be addressed and fixed. Now, we're not talking about minor complaints which may require slight tweaking or no treatment at all, such as the amount of Korok seeds or rather widespread issues the fans had, mainly the dungeons and weapon system. Whether you're for or against, the matter of the fact is that there were widespread complaints with them, and if the developers were to do more work in these departments, it would instantly give the sequel a boost in terms of overall enjoyment. We don't think that a complete overhaul is necessary as the big change to this format was still amazing, but some small changes would be nice. For the dungeons, bringing back a sense of linearity would please a lot of fans, especially the long-time fans. A sort of hybrid between open world and linear dungeons could work well to solve this issue. Perhaps akin to aspects of Ocarina of Time and A Link to the Past, where some dungeons can be done in any order. Say the first three can be in whatever order you like, and then the following four to five can also be done in any order. On top of this, giving them more individuality would help as the Divine Beasts were all the same in terms of looks and environment, which made sense for the story of the game, but in the sequel, adding more defining features to each dungeon would please a lot of fans. As for the weapons, it is a bit more complicated. Some fans admit to liking the durability system, but many didn't like it. We think that it could stay, but be improved, perhaps through the addition of repairing and upgrading weapons through blacksmiths. The actual fundamentals of how that system could work could be a video in itself, so we'll leave that for today. But the addition of smiting to enhance the entire durability system would be a big plus for the sequel, taking what the first game did and improving it without removing it entirely. The nature and wildlife in Breath of the Wild is one of my favourite things about the game. A truly alive and, well, wild game. But I feel that this could be improved, or more expanded upon in the sequel, if it wants to have a good shot at hitting the same achievement its predecessor did. We got some pretty awesome content, such as rideable bears, horse customization, and doggos. But, IG, Shigeru, my boys, we couldn't pet them. This was an actual issue for many. Not a serious one, but it was a want for sure. In past games such as Twilight Princess, we could interact with animals such as dogs and cats. We could pick them up, play with them, and connect, but Breath of the Wild doesn't really have this. Sure, you can use the dogs to help find treasure, which admittedly is cool, but come on. Let us pet the damn good doggos. And also, bring back cats. Please, I don't care how you do it, just bring them back. Even if that means the lore would be a ship of cats sailed into Hyrule one day, I don't care. Just do it. On top of that, I feel that fishing should be reintroduced, and no, this is not a personal one. Okay, maybe it is. But still, an expansive fishing mechanic would be awesome. Personally, I'd like a proper rod and reel combo, lures, bait, and so on, but what I think would be a little more realistic is expansive spear fishing beneath the waves. I think that some of the Lurelin residents could sail us out to sea, as we know they are a group of fisher women and men. This would also involve adding, to some degree, underwater exploration, which was a highly requested mechanic too. This may also unlock some outer islands to explore whilst you're fishing, but that's going into a whole other discussion. I just think that fishing should be brought back in a more conventional sense, along with the animals. The Legend of Zelda series is very well known for its bombastic and theoretical soundtracks. The music always fits so well to the location, environment and situation, and whilst Breath of the Wild changed this up drastically, that was to fit the environment of the game, which was a quiet, post-apocalyptic world. 
It was met with mixed reaction, but ultimately fits as the typical Zelda music just wouldn't fit well in this setting. However, the sequel may, and assuming it does, will be a bit more alive. This could open the door to bring back some of the more traditional tracks, but not necessarily the lively tracks. Perhaps with the implied underground exploration, we could see more creepy and chilling themes return, alike to the gore mines from Twilight Princess, the Shadow Temple from Ocarina of Time, and even the standard cave theme. The same goes for the dungeons of the game. Assuming they take a more hybrid to traditional form, the return of unique music fit to that dungeon will be a great improvement. Okay, to get one thing clear, yes, I do mean Princess Zelda in this case, but not as your conventional Zelda companion. In the past, we've seen sidekicks such as Navi, Tattle, Midna, and the criminally underrated Limebeg, among many others, but the thing about the majority of these companions is that they are constantly by Link's side. In Breath of the Wild, Link didn't really have a companion at all, and while some may argue that the Sheikah Slate or Princess Zelda reaching out counts as one, it doesn't. Companions are a very loved part of Zelda games, and having Zelda herself as a companion would be an amazing fit if you ask me. But don't overdo it, Nintendo. For this to work, I think she would need to be similar to Linebeck in terms of being around Link. A lot of the time, Link works on his own, but for certain parts of the game, himself and Princess Zelda would travel together. I have feared in the past that Zelda would end up being some sort of hub character who we only come to to get quests and updates, but I believe if she is made as a companion for segments of the game, that the sequel would instantly have an added charm. Not only would this offer a companion, but for the first time, Princess Zelda would be a consistent companion, and not just one for one lone part of the game. It has been 35 years. Let's get Zelda involved and break that damsel in distress treatment. This is something that could be controversial with fans, but in my honest opinion, if, and that is a huge if, if done right, could make this game not only game of the year, but better than Breath of the Wild. Throughout the series, the final boss of each game has always been spectacular. Four stage showdowns, beast versus man in the ruins of a castle, dueling with the Gerudo king below the sea, and even going blade to blade with evil itself. These fights define their respective games, and I have confidence that Ganondorf, the presumable final boss of the game, will be something special, but to truly give it an edge over every other game, I think that a lore changing ending would do this. Something that upon beating the final boss changes the lore of the series. This could be regarding the cursed demise put down tens of thousands of years ago, or create some sort of new timeline in the series. As long as it is lore changing, story driven, and bloody epic, it will do for me. Perhaps this is the final appearance of Ganondorf killing him and somehow breaking the reincarnation cycle once and for all. This is of course all extremely problematic, but not impossible. If these points actually happened, I can confidently say that in my honest opinion, the sequel could do what its predecessor did, only better. Once again, redefining the Zelda series. But be sure to keep in mind that these are purely my opinion. These aren't facts or things that I genuinely demand from Nintendo. They just make really good fits in my opinion and give it a chance at Game of the Year. Thanks a ton for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing for more Zelda content. What did you think of the ideas? Could these truly put the sequel up there as a contender for Game of the Year, or does it have no chance? Leave a comment below and look out for my replies. Big thanks to Conrad for joining me on this one. If you'd like to see more from him, then be sure to go and check out the video we did over on his channel covering a theory on Forhey Tenno. It's an interesting one. As always, a huge heartfelt thank you goes out to all of my supporters across Patreon and YouTube. I cannot express to you enough how helpful and appreciated this support is. If you'd like to join them here at the end of all of my videos, get yourself a shout out upon joining and more, then consider supporting via Patreon or YouTube. Again, thanks for watching, and until the next time, I've been Pyro Gamer.